just to summarize it once again in the shortest possible way, the ban on Li Ming and Zagara resulted in either Grey Main or um, what's the other guy that I said just now? I either Grey Main or Rhaegar. And since it's Grey Main, it's definitely going to be Rhaegar. And because it's Resurgence, they will pick Thrall. They like Thrall a lot. So that's Thrall Resurgence, uh, Thrall Rhaegar on Resurgence site. Karazim would, uh, would punish an overextension on the Thrall to fight. Um, they were considering to ban out the Muradin regardless, but they decided to go for it to snatch away the Muradin, but they decided to go for the ETC instead. Uh, Resurgence decides to ban out Zeratul and Tyrande getting banned out because they don't want it to face against a Muradin Tyrande, but because this is Resurgence and not Radix, they will paradise heroes like Falstead and Jaina, which you can see there. And Muradin getting picked up at the end. Now for FFKG, picking up the Kel'thas here, uh, I don't agree. I, I just don't like Kel'thas uh, anymore. There's no more love for Kel'thas. Lunar is a lot better. Uh, there's a lot of other range damage deals that's a lot better. Kel'thas now maybe going in for the fiery meatball, the pyroblast. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Tyrol also good providing some form of um, invulnerability. But yeah, that said, I do apologize for the mute just now. It was, uh, was not a mute though. It was, uh, it was just the audio cable having some problem and uh, the producers fixed it. So at least now you guys can hear me. Okay, so Dragonshire definitely going to be expecting a lot of a uh, solo lane action going down here. No Zagara, that was banned out because first pick for FFKG did well. Resurgence just doesn't want to deal with that. Uh, Falstad's providing a lot of mobility here, so I like the Falstad on the top lane as well. Um, Kelthos maybe just being picked up here to clear the lane better. It does clear the lane better than uh, some of the other uh, range damage dealers like you know Lunara. Um, Karazim's not going to do much in the early game. ETC, Tyrol has that pre-level 4 advantage, but I don't think it's going to really translate to anything here. There's a lack of lack of a lockdown. Unless you're talking about Kilthar's rotation. Greyman top lane should be the case. I will, I will also be expecting false stat on the top lane. And at the same time, uh, Thrall, Rhaegar, probably going to be rotating a little bit. Uh, could be also Thrall on the top lane and just false stat uh, bottom. That's fine as well. Jaina, false stat. It's kind of sad though. This uh, this draft here just is basically both teams uh, knowing like what the other team likes to pick. And Leeming, that would have been really awesome a resurgence. But because of a lack of Leeming, they're not going to be able to siege up as fast. And uh, you're going to have to work with Jaina, who doesn't really have much siege damage. He also got that Thrall, and uh, he's, he's pretty important. Um, but yeah, so lack of siege on that part on side of resurgence uh, for the early game. The good rotations uh, very much important. You will be expecting some Murd and Jaina combo to go through, maybe even with Thrall. So would say that the early game rotation should go to its RSG, although there's two wars on the side of FFKG. But uh, the Malaysian squad should not. I don't think they actually have enough. Um, they have enough lockdown on that part. Just basically the uh, Kelthus and ETC that may work to some extent, but. Well, again, we have to see how that works out. Kel'thas ETC, it's it's a very tricky comp uh, composition pull off in the early game. Like, I won't put my finger to it. Like, gravity lap's not the easiest to connect. ETC power slide, yes, you know, it sets up the fight. But Kel'thas early game also don't really have that kind of damage. Okay, so once this game is ready, we'll go. This is actually. Game number one in match uh, five of today, and that's Group A, by the way. So after this um, match is done, we're gonna have one more match, and then we'll finish and close out the broadcast for today. I'll be back again tomorrow for day two of the SE Originals. But for now, it's gonna be RSG versus FFKG, the best team in Singapore and Malaysia faces off for some water problems. Uh, just citing some local issues, but <laughs> okay. I don't know how this uh, Kelthus is going to have to, you know, how much he's going to have to carry, really. Late game, maybe. Would definitely be expecting the Chain Bomb build again. Uh, there's only one instance that I saw a Fear of the Sun well built, and that's the Resurgence playing it. It was pretty good, though, so that worked out. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen, going to game right now. Match number five on the blue team. We get Resurgence representing Singapore, Zappi. Playing as the Jaina, Tanuki onto the Rhaegar, Capricorn on the Feldstat, CW. We'll be playing as the Muradin, let's be honest, Vendetta on the Thrall. A little bit of a different role here. 
Um, Zappi has been playing the Thrall, but it seems like it's going to be Vendetta that's playing Thrall today. Zappi on the Jaina. So they rolled sub. Capricorn also uh, very much convicted that he's one of the best Jaina players slash Falstaff player. And he's picking the Falstaff. On the red team, we got Malaysians. Fong Fei K gaming the best team in Malaysia. Zephyria on the Kel'thas turns on to um, the Tyrell Om Nom Nom will be the OETC. Mofalicious on Greymane. Las Benalis. It's going to be Doll Eater on the Karazine. So Resurgence now taking a bit of a time to uh, body block those uh, minions there just to make sure they have a slightly favorable uh, position here for the first wave. It's going to overextend past the halfway mark and that's probably going to be a little bit easier for the blue team to work with. CW overextends though. And um, got to be very careful about it. Zappy taking a bit of a damage from the back line but the Gravity Labs does not connect. CW once again giving chase but not going to get any damage out there. Zappy also facing off against Karazim. Uh, it seems like blue team took a lot more beating than uh, the red did, but resurgence they still got that trade up on uh, the Muradin, so at least it's gonna have second wind to heal him back up to full HP as and when possible. Now Shrine is gonna activ activate in just about 20 seconds, and you can see that Thrall's gonna be on the top lane against Greymane. Uh, pretty much Greymane's gonna be able to win this lane here, and at the same time Veneta just uh, pulling up the Wind Fury, Kelthas dying in the mid lane in the meantime. Bottom lane, it's going to be Feldstat that's going to solo this one up. Okay, the Shrine's just activating itself right now. Uh, we'll see Capricorn pick up the bottom side. Greymane going for the top. I don't think Thrall's going to be afraid to face off against Greymane here. So it should be a blue Dragonite Shrine really soon. There we go. And Stearns uh, trying to come in here and put up a fight. Thrall trying to buy some time. But Dolly that goes in, it looks like it's going to be a kill against a Karzim. And Karzim end with a Radiant Dash, but still going to go down at the end. Zappy now, unfortunately, not able to pick up the sh uh, Dragonite Shrine because on the top lane, Stern's actually managed to box Vendetta out of this uh, Shrine spot. Tanuki from the back line. They're going for Mopalicious, and there goes the Blizzard. Nice connection. The Blizzard picks up the kill. Greymane is going down. Level 4 against level 3. We got some talent options coming in. In the meantime, no kills whatsoever, but it's going to be the same Chain Lightning build on the Thrall. Um, interesting point to notice that it's, it's the Arcane Intellect that's up on Jaina instead of the uh, Snowstorm. And Muradin probably want to go for uh, the standard Reverberation Thunder Clap. Hold that thought though. Om Nom Nom, a little bit of trouble there. We'll be okay. Sephira again looking to try and deny this Dragon Knight. Nope, Tanuki picks it up. Really well done. And all of a sudden, first Dragon Knight goes to RSG. So that's a thunder burn on the Muradin as well as um, uh, the Pharaoh Hari going to be on Regar. Very interesting build here for Regar coming out of uh, Tanuki. It's uh, one that only he runs. Not much of a lightning shield. Just basically increased range on the Aircraft Totem as well as Pharaoh uh, Hari for increased mana and health regeneration. It's going to be power throw on the Felstad. Meanwhile, here for the red team, standard Gilnean cocktail build coming out for Greymane. Nothing fishy. And it's going to be another win that's going to get picked up here by Kel'Thas on the side also for ETC. Dubbing a guitar, rolling like a stone, standard stuff, standard Karazim. And for Tyrael though, we're going to have to pull this one out. It's uh, Horadric Reforging. Horadric Reforging basically reduces cooldown uh, for Eldrin's Might and Amplified Healing. Bit of a weird build really. Um, would have gone for Regeneration Globes regardless. Uh, but okay, Tanuki just responding as the Ragnar right now. Muradin going up against Kel'Thas, they find a, a small little window and they go in to pick off the KT. Meanwhile, Om Nom Nom in a little bit of trouble once again. It seems like RSG is able to pick up a double tap here against the blue, against the red team. And um, all the way in the top lane, Tyrell here by himself trying to hold the front, soak up the lane EXP. Bottom lane, already can see that the attempt on the Sea is going to start right now. Resurgence playing a little bit greedy, but still, they just pick off two of the enemy targets that can definitely afford this one here. All right, so back to uh, blue team's talents. It seems like it's going to be Ice Lance, follow through, battle momentum, as well as the secret weapon, Las Benales Cleanse. So very standard build, nothing special. Uh, utility up uh, full-fledged on Regar with the Cleanse up. Capricorn going to try and barrel back out. Gravity Labs connects nicely, but Vendetta swings by. Capri still with the living bomb up on himself. Tries to take fly back up, but nope, the Fling Stripe picks up the kill, and it's a fried chicken wing right there. Mofalicious with the Razor Swipes will be able to disengage as well. Back to human form. Safira in the meantime trades up for Feldstad. Will go down. Great place by RSG to try and squeeze up some value out from uh, that trade there. Level 8 against level 7. 4 minutes and 45 seconds and counting. 
Stearns in the top lane by himself, not the best spot to be in. Meanwhile, level seven hit here by the red team and it's gonna be the uh, incendiary elixir as well as the um, fission bomb, loudspeakers. You also got the echo of heaven, battle momentum, all straight up standard talent builds here. So you see the shrines get activated real soon. The main reason why they're going for these mercenary camps is to try and get some a little bit of automatic pushing. What I don't like about this game so far is that uh, both teams were not able to knock off the fort so early on. Uh, that's mainly because there's no leaming, there's no chogal, there's no like you know siege, uh, sieges yet, and no zagara for sure. Okay, no chain bomb yet, but CW just uh, a little bit of a bad spot. Zappy getting chased right now by FFKG, but we'll be okay. Rest of resurgen resurgence is here right now. Vendetta with the uh, chain lightning greeting against the ETC. And so far you see Stearns is going into the top Sun Shrine. The bottom Moon Shrine not the best, uh, no, no contest there whatsoever. Most of Resurgence effort right now is trying to clear up the Bruiser camp. Bottom lane, there's a little bit of automatic pushing. Karazin, meanwhile, the mid lane there just died to Vendetta and Capricorn's uh, rotation. But the bottom lane, you have some form of a push going out already in the form of the Siege Shines. That's automatic, that's good. Falstad's gonna be here, he picks this one up, should be looking for to take flight back for a fight here. Om nom nom, in the meantime, ETC dropping very, very low. Nice face melt though, but the Murden jumps up, and Murden's so fat that when he jumps, the ETC is flat. Level 10 against level 9, you see Haymaker, Sundering, probably gonna be the Ring of Frost as well as Mighty Gus, and uh, also the Ancestral Healing. I like to see Ring of Frost, but I know that Water Elemental is preferred these days. Ring of Frost does provide a lot more burst if you go for Icy Veins, as well as, um, the numbing blast. That's that's actually sorry, northern exposure, level 16. That's really good. All right, so the second dragonite for resurgence right now. They're knocking on a mid four. They probably will be able to pick that one up pretty easily. And uh, meanwhile, Zappy still undecided on what he wants to play here on his heroic. Bottom lane, Sea Shines finally getting addressed by Doll Leader. Level 10 also just reached here by the red team. It's go for the throat, divine palm sanctification, and uh, seeing if it's sanctification. It Probably does, doesn't want to go for Ring of Frost already. Could be one of the main reasons why he's not decided yet, waiting for Kilthus. So we can play this game. Kilthus uh, gotta go for the Pyro Blast. There we go. And for ETC, has to be, uh, oh wow, not the Mosh Pit, just the stage dive. What elemental it is, gonna be for Zappy. If it's a Ring of Frost, it will be very tricky to pull off in this instance because of Sanctification. And uh, you also gotta worry about uh, the possible lockdown there, but since it's not gonna be a mosh pit, you don't really have to uh, play safe with the Ring of Frost. You could actually go for a water elemental, a lot more damage. Here comes ETC on the back line. Dolly they're taking a lot of damage. Sanctification is keep, keeping the entire team alive in a push now against Jaina. Jaina did not uh, connect the ancestral healing there. Karazim also gonna go down. The Flame Strike connects on two target. Meanwhile, CW giving chase against Tyrell. Nice stuns going out, and it's gonna be a kill. Ruff of the Archangel now gonna do some burst damage only on one Tanuki. But two for one exchange still very nicely handled there by RSG. Could have gone a lot worse. There's still the Pyro Blast that uh, the team could easily use, but Zephyria, man, just gonna have to take it slow. That was actually a really good play there by uh, the Tyrell on the Sanctification. The Ancestral Healing, if it connected on Jaina, it would have been really disastrous for uh, FFKG. But they were able to keep themselves safe because of Sanctification, as well as the fact that they were going in for the burst really, really well. Very nicely done. Go for the throw was not even used by Greymane. That's how that's how much of a burst they have there on that team using just the flame strike and stuff like that. Okay, so level 13 here for RSG. It looks like it's gonna be Thunder uh, Strike, Ice Block, and a bit of a hold that thought. Okay, nice Sundering. Did not achieve anything though. Om Nom Nom in the back line does not have the mosh pit. There we go. We have a little bit of the uh, Pyroblast, Fiery Meatball kisses the Capricorn, but there's not much of a kill there. Doll Leader dropping very low in the meantime. And the blue team giving chase once again. Doll Leader dropping just very, very low. Gonna have to be very careful there. We'll be okay. So Thrall going for uh, the Grace of Air. So twice as many stacks. It, it's almost confirmed that it will be the um, Tempest Fury at level 16. Giant Killer, very nice uh, pickup here by Feldstat. That's gonna shred through the double warriors on the side here for FFKG. At the same time, you finally see the first lightning shield build here. Uh, not the first build, sorry, the first talent pickup. It's the earth shield. This is uh, gonna provide 12% of the maximum health for three seconds. It's a very nice soak there. It's like a sponge. So RSG up against FFKG, game number one. Um, having a bit of a ping issue on the side of Malaysia. So 
They're gonna try and resolve that ASAP, but that explains the pause. Just now the fiery meatball. Pretty tricky. This is the this is the thing. If um if the flame strike connected on uh, the cap on Falstad being played by Capricorn, and if uh, you have Grayman going in with go for the throw, it would have been a kill there against the uh, the Falstad. That said, we do have a um, couple of options here. Once uh, level 13 is reached by FFKG, you, you're gonna probably see the chain bomb. Uh, 16, uh, sorry, 13 on ETC. I'm gonna be expecting the face melt. And Karazim, probably gonna go in for even more uh, utility. So straight up, very, very standard picks there. And it's a power spike that I think that FFKG needs. They need to get a level 16, it's important for them because Concentrated Blast just does so much more work. Arcane Bearer keeps uh, Kel'Thuz alive. So while now it looks like RAG is ahead, they're ahead because their heroes don't really need that spike. Um, and they're already getting a lot more value in the early stages here. So they at least have that to work with. But once they hit 16, they also have got the Tempest Fury. They got that uh, Numbing Blast to work with. Stone Form probably gonna get picked up here for um, Murden. And uh, you also will see Hammer Time on Falstaff. It's not like it's, an, it's not as important. It's not like it's not important. It's just uh, not as important for uh, RSG to get 16 compared to FFKG because Greyman does a lot more damage. Kilthus survives. Kilthus needs that 13, which it doesn't even have yet. Not to forget that there's also the um, circle of uh, healing that Karazim can provide as well late game. Those are some pretty good options there for them. All right, so once this latency is um, resolved, we'll be able to go back into this game here by game number one, and RSG currently with the lead. I'm gonna talk a little bit about the other game that uh, happened just now between Renovasha 1 as well as uh, Relics. I think it's a pretty convincing game for both uh, both of those games in the set there. Yeah, uh, two to three level lead for Renovasha 1, and huge congratulations to those guys. They finally are uh, able to beat Relics. Um, Relics was the team that stopped them from going to Las Vegas last year. And now Renovasha 1, man. Some say that they are the best team in Southeast Asia. Last year, they're definitely um, the least favorite going into the SEA games. But they finished in second place. And uh, it worked out for them regardless. So waiting for this to resolve, in the meantime, let us know who you support in the chat. Uh, we'd love to have you guys let us know who you think is going to win this one. RSG uh, has been regarded as the favorite team to win this tournament. Even some of the players, Zappi, he also said that he already got his backpack for Korea. He's ready for it. Of course, um, there's still space for other teams to represent Southeast Asia, and that's going to happen tomorrow. So tomorrow, how, the, how it's going to work is, in case you guys just tune in and you don't know the format for tomorrow, uh, today we're doing group stages. That's four teams in each group, group one and group two. And uh, the top spot for both groups at the end of the day will be seated into the upper bracket finals. The second and third place will be seated to the lower bracket uh, where they're going to have to play against each other. The second of group one is going to play against the third of group two, vice versa. And the fourth place of both groups one and two today will uh, be eliminated from the tournament. They'll run for spring championship and tier. So somebody's going to go home today. And uh, tomorrow, we're going to crown one Southeast Asian champion. I'm excited. I'm pumped up. I'm actually keeping my voice uh, for tomorrow. So I'm not really screaming. I'm not really uh, going all out. Also saving the jokes, saving the, uh, the the screams and stuff for uh, for tomorrow. Tomorrow is really going to be exciting because tomorrow is where you have like you have one team representing Southeast Asia. Tomorrow's game is going to be really good. You have the best of both groups playing against each other. Resurgence against Renovasio. Probably going to see Relics getting thrown into the mix as well. Uh, Relics needs to try and formulate a battle plan tonight to try and overcome Renovasio tomorrow. Even if they if they meet again, yeah. But yep. 
So still waiting for uh, Malaysians to connect back into this game. So far, uh, already three to four of them have left this game. They're just going to have to reconnect back. That's just the way it is. Um, a bit of a latency issue on that side. Okay, they're ready. And waiting for the blue team to, s to indicate that they're ready. Okay, here we go. So ladies and gentlemen, the game just resumed. 10-2 is the current kill score. 13 against 12. And Shrine's gonna activate just right about now. Resurgence, because they were able to just uh, push the bottom lane a lot, they will also be able, able to get this uh, Siege Giants up. That said, they now go for their own Siege Giants, which is gonna result in a lot more bottom lane push. The Bruiser Cam gonna also going to get attempted here. Jaina just makes the job a lot easier. Bottom side, you also see that it's Murden as well as the Felstead. That's a lot slower. Some posturing from both sides. FFKG setting up a party bush here in the top part of this battleground. Bottom lane's automatically pushing out. They're going to have to defend somehow. That is uh, this is Resurgence's way of forcing a fight. Like, there's a distraction here. And meanwhile, you have Kjolthas getting caught out. Only seeing the Water Elemental getting popped out immediately. Sanctification being used as well. ETC swings by with the stage dive, but doesn't get anything done. Sundering connects beautifully. Om nom nom there with the Divine Pump being used on him. Still gonna see the Ancestral, and it seems like beautiful timing. ETC goes down. Water Elemental still giving chase against the Karazim. Expires at the end, a nice little stun against Greymane. But Zappy with those blizzards going out. Dragonite being picked up here by what looks like a Thrall. And it's gonna blow down the mid lane. Vendetta doing a good job on that one. Meanwhile, CW going for the stun against Greymane. Zappy looking for an angle on the blizzard. Oh, gonna be very careful there because the corner called by the ice block just to in instantaneously react. And the pyro blast coming out. There is no ice block for Zappy. Oh, he's gonna bring Felstead down as well. <laughs> Oh my god, that was so close. You can see Capricorn just freaking out right there. Tanuki dropping a lot of HP as well. And uh, Dolly there going with the Raiden Dash. Capricorn, gotta be very careful. CW pulling back, the Gravity Labs does not connect. Meanwhile, in other news, we have a Dragon Knight that's run, running 100% uh, wall now. 90% <laughs> HP and 20 seconds and nobody's stopping him. Tanuki, pretty bad spot. Oh, actually, Tanuki. Gonna be okay. It goes to a form. CW looking for a long time, but ETC from the back line. Tanuki still does not have the ancestral healing. A nice uh, Mighty Gust, and all of a sudden, Ragnar's still alive. They want to go in here for the Kelthus. Kelthus getting the Haymaker going in as well. There goes the Divine Pile connects nicely. Sapphire is back to full HP, but it's not gonna be enough. Capricorn again with a bit of a stun from his Hammer Time on the Hammerang. There we have it. It's a kill. The Doll Leader now also gonna get stunned, and he's also in a lot of trouble. Nice read and dash back out, but Stearns. Not able to save the team in if Vendetta picks up the kill. It's a three-man trade. Cannot call it a trade because it's a three-man, three-for-nothing exchange. 17 against 14 right now. And um, minimal damage being dealt there by Vendetta on Thrall. But without Thrall, it's pretty clear that the team cannot take a fight. Still very nice burst of reactions from the uh, Grey main. We get, we get a replay right now, boys. We're going into it. Here we, here we go. Tanuki. Look at this clutch play, ETC from the back, he healed himself back up, he lands a good shield and this mighty Gus from Capricorn saved the day. Uh, the Haymaker is not the best, but somehow they just wanted to apply a little bit more pressure and damage. Sephiria just uh, in a lot of trouble, Capricorn throwing out that really important hammerang here. And when he returns, that's a little bit of a stun. Alright, so now we're also going back to real time. And 17 against 15. 15 kills against 3. 13 minutes in RSG. 3 level lead against FFKG right now. A resurgence. They need... They don't need to force a fight. They can actually just push right here. It's pretty easy for them. For FFKG, they are on the uh, edge of getting level 16. Zephyria. Yeah, looking for the Haymaker. You can tell, but nope. Sanctification going to deny that. Zephyria in a lot of a bad spot just now. CW was looking for the Haymaker. Would have been a great play there. But still, good save by Tyrael, the goalkeeper. CW. Lands the uh, 
Thunderclap, and he pulls back out. If you look at the Talon options, it's Tempest Fury, Numbing Blast, give him the axe, hammer time, of Grass Totem. Very standard build here as well. Uh, do note it's actually a backdrop and not Arcane Barrier, and it's a uh, Concentrated Blast, Speed Metal, Soothing Breeze, Holy Ground. Soothing Breeze instead of Circle of Life, so this is actually going to be a bit of a utility uh, uh, anti-crowd control. Karazin coming in. Tanuki buying some time, it's just barely enough. Nice Mighty Gus. CW clearly picking up the Dragonite. Maybe going for a fight in. Nice Sundering, but it's not enough. They want to try and pick up one target. The Karazin popping the Divine Palm. Already going to see the ETC coming back out. Zappy giving chase against the Kel'Thuz. Uh, Cancelling the Pyro Blast in just about five seconds. There's Zappy dropping very, very low, but a nice pick off. Zappy still with those Frost Bolt going head to head against Karazim in the meantime here. Uh, Vendidas, the sole surviving member of that fight. Zappy still alive, but three men down on the left. And in the meantime, CW. The, the, the hero that nobody cares about is just knocking on the core by himself. Um, probably gonna be game here. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, not game. Yeah, CW gonna respawn. Uh, he's probably still gonna try and end this one. Meanwhile, Tall Eater picked off Jaina in the bottom side. And CW, yeah, it's just gonna do as much damage as he can. One hammer at a time. 37% on the core. And it's a five man team wipe. Resurgence now. Losing the level lead, and it's equalized nicely by FFKG. They can also get a level uh, 19. Both of these teams are friends, clearly. They're just uh, chatting with each other right now. Uh, as you can see, all the four still standing. <laughs> Did he just call him QF? Very, very funny. Okay, so we, we are gonna we're gonna wait for uh, RSG. To respawn and take the next fight. 20 seconds before Muradin's back out. And FFKG acting like they already won the game, going for a four directly. Sundering splits the fight in two. Vendetta going for that. A uh, little bit of extra first spirit, but it doesn't connect. Mighty Gus, not the best. Capricorn could have gone to the outside and just uh, do a bit of a backward Gus, but because they don't have Jaina, they don't have Muradin, they didn't want to take the fight. 65 uh, seconds on that Sundering cooldown, but a four. Already down to about a, a fifth of HP right there. Very tricky spot for blue team to be in. I think that they actually use those uh, heroics just to make sure that the fort still stands at the end. Very even uh, level right now. CW. Tricky position, but it's going to be okay. And it's free siege giants for uh, FFKG. Also waiting for uh, Jaina to decide if she wants to go for the Bruiser Camp. Don't think it's a good option though. In the meantime, CW, a little bit of trouble right now. Uh, with a nice dog toss, gonna be fine. And uh, Jaina on the top side, trying to activate in just about three seconds right now. Stearns, a little bit of trouble. Uh, unfortunately, no stun there on the hammer time. The hammer rank that's been thrown out, level 16 upgrade. 0 0.75 second stun, that's pretty effective. Now, ETC in the bottom part, Gonna pick up this Moon Shrine. He does have the um, stage dive though. Capricorn, not in a good spot, but nice barrel roll. Some heals coming in. Ancestral also being used very, very early on. And Om Nom now all of a sudden in a little bit of trouble. There goes the Power Blast against Tanuki. Tanuki is gonna take a beating to the face, but will be okay. And Dolly the pulls back out once again, but you see the Sanctum Fusion just keeping the second before Blizzard completely out of reach. Capricorn in the front line looking for that. A mighty gust, but not gonna find it. He just wants to pick up the Kelthas first, Doll Leader also going down. The Gus is actually not available for the next 20 seconds. So that was just mainly the pick off that Kelthas turns down. And a lot of trouble. Surge also going to go down. It's a five man team wipe. This is going to be game. The core is exposed. They can dance around a little bit first, but that's what Zeppi's doing. Look at that slash dance. This guy. <laughs> it's game. Ladies and gentlemen, game one going to RSG in style. Level 20 both sides, um, and you can see that they're very comfortable winning this game. Clearly, FFKG didn't have a shot at this. Clearly, they were um, the wild class really bad. 21 against 8. <laughs> Overextension gave them the chance to equalize, but still not going to be a win. All right, so we're now going into the replay. Uh, that's a very nice um, sanctification. Capricorn going front. I actually thought he's got Mighty Gus, but no, it's on cooldown. 
And uh, Kelthas just going out like that. Very nice burst of potential coming out from both the Murden as well as Thrall. Vendetta with an aggressive ball of the storm going into the front line, picking up this Tyrell as well. That's the game. And look at Zappy, man. He's just dancing. He knows. He knows he's got this. Doesn't even need to do anything. <laughs> All right, very cute. Ladies and gentlemen, that's game one. We're now going for a short break. We'll be back with game number two. Thank you very much for hanging out with us in the SEA qualifiers. This is Babel, and hope to see you guys in just a bit. Up, but Bullish is also just jumping in quickly on Capricorn. There goes the uh, suppression pulse, but it's not going to be effective. Stumble from CW not connecting Zappy. Also with the Faith Prison once again to the background. Om Nom Nom now does not have the um, Divine Shield. And he also does not have the mosh pit, so he's not able to do any plays that in that instance. ETC going down once again. Yet another round of Prime Rip on the house. And we got uh, three men down position. CW does not even care about the gate at this stage right now.